going to be talking about the new workflow. And uh, this talk is going to be pretty informal, so uh, feel free to ask questions or uh, interrupt me if I say something wrong. Um, and uh, kind of what I'm just going to talk about first for a little bit is uh, what what's kind of wrong with our current work workflow. Um, so for people who are not really familiar with it, uh, the best way to describe it is it's kind of, um, we're using a Mercurial not really as Mercurial is meant to be used, but more as a glorified patch manager. Just collecting all these patches and putting them on top and reorganizing them. But it's, it's not really um, kind of revision control in, um, in the way that Mercurial's, I think, typical Mercurial uses uh, go. So, uh, I'm just going to talk about a few issues with it. Um, so, in particular, it's pretty arcane. Uh, anyone who ever wants to do any sort of Sage development, no matter what their background is, has to figure out how to develop for Sage, because it's a specialized process. Nobody else develops like we do. We develop exactly how we do, and no one else does that. Um, so, uh, kind of unfortunate for people who might have programming backgrounds that they have to learn this extra kind of hoop in order to get into Sage development. Um, uh, patches are prone to bit rotting. Um, you can post a patch, maybe great, uh, waiting for someone to review it, and two versions down the line, some slight line was changed, maybe a typo, and all of a sudden your patch doesn't apply. You have to figure it out and sometimes tracking that down, especially if you're not very familiar um, with kind of tools and whatnot, tracking down what exactly you need to do to kind of fix the patch to work on the newer version um, can be difficult and annoying. Um, and sometimes it's just, it's very hard to kind of reconcile all these, um, these different things. This also um, leads to rebasing. So you get a new version of the patch now. It works on this newer version of Sage. Um, but you, if you're doing this frequently, you get a lot of patches. So you have almost various versions of patches. So you then, in some sense, need a version control system for your patches. So you, you put a version, you know, in some sense, you want to now have a version control system for your version control system, which seems a little redundant. Um, but we don't do that. Instead, we just kind of deal with these patches in hand, and there's a lot of kind of human error there and frustration and whatnot. Um, so just not an ideal situation there. Um, so more issues? Um, yeah, so again, manual ha handling these patch files, it's very error prone. From, uh, and then like I said, rebasing all that stuff, downloading, importing them, uploading them, etc. Dealing with file names, all that stuff is very error prone. Making sure you have the right version. Uh, this occasionally led to some things getting merged into Sage that never actually had a positive review. Things like that. So uh, it's it's yeah. Um, also adds to the burden of the release manager, having to deal with all these files. Um, talking with your own, our current release manager, he, uh, it sounds like he kind of has made a lot of scripts to help him with this, but he still has to hand edit a lot of files uh, for where where the patches are and which patches to use and which order and trying to reorganize them to make sure they all apply just correctly. And that, that ideally, the release manager shouldn't have to kind of deal with all this extra burden. The, the tools should really be there to make it easy for the release manager to uh, do his job. Um, uh, so I say this, um, and people might disagree, but uh, when, I, when I say this, I mean two people who are both working on a ticket, trying to make changes simultaneously, maybe one's on a plane without internet, the other one maybe in their office working on it, but they're both working on some core aspect of this code at the same time. Um, and trying to do this 
when these two people cannot communicate in any fashion and are working on the exact same bits of code can be very hard. Um, and I say, I kind of think impossible with our current workflow because we are dealing with all these patch files. So what one person would do is they produce a patch file and the other person would produce another patch file. And then the two of you would have to reconcile now what is the kind of common collection of changes that we made you know, during time A to time B. So again, this gets back to kind of the versioned patch file issue. Um, so that, that situation, I think, should be an easy situation where two people who are both working on um, same code, cannot communicate for whatever reason, but should be able to then at some later point be able to reconcile their changes and figure out, okay, what, what should we have as a finished product? Um, and right now, that's very hard to do. Uh, okay, it's thinking, maybe. Maybe. We'll see. <laughs> the computer, oh! Well, that, that skipped ahead a little bit. <laughs> What's is it downloading updates? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, oh, now we're here. Oh, now we're here. <laughs> get back to where we were. Um, ah, and so the other kind of pain, uh, in my opinion, with the current workflow is updating as packages, these extra packages that we include in Sage, uh, almost always requires making patches to multiple repositories. Uh, one to the library, the Sage library, and one to the S package, although usually that's just done in the form of, here's a new S package with a new repository inside that has new commits in it. Um, and sometimes you might, might need to make changes to the root repository, scripts repository. So you have to make a lot of different patches all over the place in different repositories. And that, that just seems extra and not useful. We should just have one history that is kind of recording all these changes. Um, so. Uh, unless I think those, 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 in my opinion, are kind of the biggest issues with the current workflow. There's probably others that I'm missing. Uh, everyone else has their own uh, kind of personal big issues with the current workflow. Those are mine. Uh, so kind of the proposal for a new workflow, uh, move away from patch files. So a lot of the trouble we have is just from using patch files. Um, so this so kind of the big thing that is done um, with Git, common use case, um, and, mo and also commonly with Mercurial, um, as you may have kind of, if you're not familiar with Mercurial, may have um, figured from Dan's talk earlier, is you push and pull uh, change sets to and from a server. So rather than make a file, export what changes you have made into a file form, then take that file, put it on a server, someone else downloads that file to some place and then imports that file, just directly upload the changes and then download the changes. So none of that kind of uh, in intermediate creating or downloading file business. There's no extra files there, um, which, you know, you get, get into that whole like extra kind of human, um, human interaction that is error prone. Uh, unify all the repositories. So instead of having, what do we have, like a hundred, maybe more repositories where one, we have one for each S package. Uh, and technically the Sage library is an S package, as is Sage, uh, Sage root, the Sage scripts, all that stuff. They're all technically S packages and we have about a hundred of them. Um, and so rather than have a hundred repositories, just have one. 
with all the history contained in that single repository. Uh, and then, so there's um, kind of, I think, multiple ways to do this push and pull uh, stuff, although um, kind of the most popular nowadays is to use a branching model uh, where kind of each um, uh, each feature is put on their own kind of separate branch and is worked on that separate branch until it's ready kind of in whatever sense to be included in the you know, the, the main product. Um, so and this also helps because each person can have their own branch be working on um, same feature but their own personal copies of that same feature then at some later time they can easily reconcile kind of the differences between their two kind of copies of that feature. Um, so even even within a feature it's helpful. So some of the pros beyond kind of addressing the issues, well yes, that, um, it's familiar to many uh, modern work, uh, modern programmers. So I mean, many of Sage developers are not programmers. Um, most of us are mathematicians want to be mathematicians, um, but it'd be helpful to also be inviting um, to people who aren't necessarily interested in doing hardcore math, but might be interested in kind of contributing to SAGE in some less mathy ways. Um, and so kind of being friendly to uh, what is, um, you know, kind of being taught in CS um, or in industry and that sort of workflow um, and kind of the trend that is happening in, in, in that area uh, would encourage non-mathematicians uh, who like SAGE um, and know programming practices to contribute, right? It's, it's not so arcane. Um, and then something I guess I didn't address is it, is it drastically reduces the burden of the release manager. Um, Almost everything the release manager does is the same thing that a developer does. There's very little extra overhead um, that the release manager will have to do um, beyond kind of the normal, like, ensuring the quality insurance that the release manager does. But the actual tools and the way they use those tools will be very similar to standard developers. And another remark. I mean, we've been very lucky to have your own take on this burden for us for the past while, but it's it's a big burden right now. I and mean, I think that, especially going forward, making it easier to have stage releases and less of a burden for an individual. Uh, but the other thing is that it also, um, I think, would make distributed release management uh, far more viable. Um, and similar reasons that collaborative work is easier. It's, uh, you don't have to kind of worry about um, necessarily talking with the person that you're collaborating with constantly. Uh, you, you can check in in a less frequent basis. Um, and so, so cons, because I think there are a few. First is learning curve. It's a new uh, workflow. With that, there'll be a learning curve. I'm not going to comment on any sort of size or anything. Different people have different opinions on how hard it is to learn Git. Um, some people find it hard. Some people find it easy. Um, the people who find it hard, I think, tend to be a little louder. Um, but if there is going to be a learning curve regardless. And then the second one, which my, my opinion is kind of the only big one that I can think of, is and it's not exactly, uh, in my opinion, a Con. However, there are some things that become impossible uh, in this sort of model. 
um, that you need to be aware of. I uh, well, I'm talking this one. Uh, so, so separate features. So this separate features into distinct. You, you need separate features into s distinct branches. Um, and the reason for this is, you, uh, if you don't do this, you kind of get these really dirty uh, histories that have tons of merges all over the place, um, and is not going to be very useful when you're trying to look back and see now what changed here or what changed there if you're looking at a particular file in history line by line. Um, and so this, um, as I said, it's kind of a side effect of having this immutable public history, right? When you push something, uh, maybe, maybe nobody grabs it before you go and push something else up there and replace it. But if you push something up into the public, that public history is forever there if somebody else happened to grab it. So the one thing that you should always kind of do or think when using, say, Git, um, but in general, this sort of model is when you push to um, some someplace public, that those changes are permanent. You should never go and change what you've put up there. Um, and yeah. So, so the staging area can be useful for like organizing commits into uh, kind of smart changes, as in logical changes. Um, um, so, like you may have done a lot of work, and uh, but you, you shouldn't necessarily group all the work that you've done into one commit because maybe. One was just a, you wanted to separate out a typo for some reason, but maybe you changed an, uh, how an add function works and a multiply function works. And you might want to separate the changes for the add function from the multiply function. And one reason to do that is that each of those commits are kind of smaller byte size changes. So if somebody was in the future looking back at the history of this file and you had, if you kind of did that all at once, would be this big giant diff, and you're just trying to figure out what happened in this very small place. And you're, it's kind of hard to figure out what happened in that small place. Whereas if you did one commit for each of those kind of smaller logical changes, it'd be easier to figure out what happened in that small place because you don't have these giant diffs. Also, the, so when you make the, even during the staging area, when you make a commit, it's only on your machine so far yeah. until you do a push. So it's not yet public. Yeah. And you can make a lot of commits. You can even like say, oh, actually that's dumb. I want to erase those. And you can change your own stuff on your own machine. Mm -hmm. And then when you have a clean story of the change you made, you know, I changed the add function, change the multiply function, then you can go and push to the server. And now that's public event. You should never touch that again. Mm -hmm. Add on top of it, but not go on the server and mess with it. But so suppose you change the add function and the multiply function, and then you did something else, but you don't want that comment, or you have to merge two things. You can do that before you. Yeah, you, you can merge comments. Can you get rid of like? You can you can method? mess with everything with your own history as much as you want as long as it's on your machine. But how do you change your own history? Ah, well, um, I think. I mean, well, how do you? Well, uh, I'll go through. Uh, okay. Maybe an example. Okay. Um, but the the idea is that like you might make some mistakes, and that's okay. <laughs> like you might accidentally put something up into the public that mm, maybe could be a little better, but it's okay. Don't worry about it. Everyone makes mistakes. Um, if you make those mistakes and you notice before you put it into the public, you, you can hide those. But if you accidentally put them up before you notice them. Just live with it. It's okay. Yeah. Okay. Sorry. Uh, I sh I should have. I might have better ask this later. But I fear I don't. I'm not understanding stuff. The previous talk said that rebasing is uh, not uh, not considered harmful and actually an important thing to do. Now you're basically saying that the rebasing is outlawed. I'm not saying that. No. No. I'm saying that any change. So I'll get to a rebase example where that that is completely fine. Uh -huh. But 
the you shouldn't rebase um, something and then replace like replace something up um, that you've already posted in the public with this new kind of rebased version of it. Uh, uh, in particular, rebasing is one of those tools that you use to change your own right. before you can Yeah. Oh, so the index of the code history? No. Rebasing is not uh, directly. In particular, if you, you can maybe like tell people that you're collaborating with, don't mess with these branches, these are my own private things, don't rely on them having any sort of consistent history, but it's really kind of up to you um, because with track everybody can see everything. So p potentially somebody could have grabbed that thing that you're messing with, but you're, you should tell that anybody you're working with, don't use these things because they're kind of my own play toys that will maybe break through. So, um, it, so in effect, it's better to have our own uh, GitHub fork then if to work on that this? Some people do that. That's some, how some people use GitHub. Uh, I would say, I mean, apropos after discussion, if you just put branches to the GitHub that we have and not put them on a track ticket, then that's probably not enough. You really, you first, you did ask yourself your question, can anybody, is anybody going to use that branch already then? If you just put it there because you want to transfer it from your laptop to your desktop, then if it's not on the ticket, then if somebody could have looked through everything that's on it and merged everybody's branch together, but then that's a stupid, that was a stupid thing to do, that's not something that's no one to do. So there's no really act. As soon as you link to it, you link on that. Actually, you look at my branch there, then you look for a similar attitude. So, I mean, that all kind of works into what exactly is public, right? So, choose your public. But typically, at least something that's on a ticket is public, or something that you've told someone else collaborate with me on this ticket or on this branch, that's probably public. Yeah. So um, perhaps especially if we sense later and you're gonna be talking about this issue anyway, but since it seems to be related to this common. Um, so right now one of the ways I use the track server is I've been working on a patch for a while with collaborators with several people know one of our friends is in Joe mm -hmm. in the States. And so often what we do is even though we know that we're not close to the finished product, at the end of the night I'll just say, okay, I've come to a stopping point. It's not near completion, but the stopping point. It works. So I put it on the track server. I collaborate in Germany, wakes up, work on it, and then by the time I get up, I download the new version. But this means that we're putting many public versions online every day, um, where with the same track server, we are just keep replacing the same file. So, so uh, what you're really doing is you're just updating a branch. So you would have your own branch that you've been pushing things to. Um, and you're moving that branch to a new commit each time. Because each time you push something, you're uploading new change sets, and 
where you, what your current working state is, is that branch, and it's going to be at the end. And similar for him, he's going to have his own branch. So you'll have two things, and each of you are kind of following each other's. And then at the end, you'll decide on his or yours, and that's going to be the thing that you'd attach to the ticket. So yes, you have this public thing, but you're not really, it's not exactly a new public thing each time. It's just an updated public thing, similar to No, that makes perfect sense. But you should, if you do that, even even if it's just you and your friend, you should consider and bring commit on top of each other instead of everybody doing and rebasing, do rebasing. Because that it's it's a nameless contract, but it's probably much easier because everybody has to commit. Even if you do it simultaneously, maybe you do it at the same time. That's already two people with an upper crowd that is a model with a high commit on top of more commit to much better than rebate. Rebate is going to be the old Well, kind of on that, so if, say, Greg and I are working on a ticket together and we're uploading to track, are we working on the same branch or are we working actually on two separate branches? Um, that's a bit of up to the top. Well, if, if, I, if I went to if I went to the you know Sage dash Dev um, a branch brand of tickets uh, and I, I you know I, I ran the, the Dev script for that and then Greg did the same thing you know I make some changes I recommit so I think goals. I think how the Dev scripts would work is right now I would make a uh, branch for each of you. Um, so you right. And so we would be merging branches each time. Well, whenever you, whenever you take break branch as something push, then uh, the new branch. So it is now. And it hasn't been. But that sounds like merging. You don't. Okay, if, if you simultaneously did something because one of you was in the then you need to merge. If you just pull something, add, push, then there's no more merging. Okay, so then they're the same. So and that, that, that would be, that would, we're working on the same branch on the other server. I think the branch is like it's on the, on the, like you have a different camera, and you have to so you all, all, the two of you have, each of you have a pointer, there's a sign pointer, there's a break pointer, and if you work at different time, one will become it, so if you move one pointer, and when you come and you do the merge, you should, you should do a pointer, or like, further away on the camera. Alright, but there's still... Down yeah, the same branch, it's though. It's still like one line, and the two branches are the two points that are on this line. Well, the and pointers are branches, like branches I, in, in my understanding, of get that. Um, well, because that, that, you have that in this graph of commits. Did you end up with a loop or not? I don't know. Yeah. Whether that just depends on whether you need to sign on any loop and your Yeah, if we did two commits. Well, yeah, something like this and then we Okay. Uh, okay. Um, so if you if you want to use multiple brand or multiple features at once that haven't say made it into whatever project you're working on here, Sage. Uh, <laughs> What kind of the typical practice is, is to create this private tornado branch, if you will, that has all of your different features merged in, and just kind of constantly merging in that stuff. Now the reason why this is private is because it creates a lot of extra merges, and each merge is an additional commit. So that uglies up the history. Um, so that's, that's why it's kind of a private thing that you just do locally. Um, so so that's one thing you never want to work off of this tornado kind of crazy thing that you're uh, building if you're actually writing code you should fir first figure out what your dependencies are merge your dependencies and then write the code okay, so um, 
right minimal tornado possible when uh, <laughs> trying to write code but this is just if you like want to use a bunch of features so different than trying to use as in run a program with a bunch of features versus use as in develop some new feature based on it. Um, but of course this kind of is a challenge to how you might best adapt the Comnot queue where you have all the features in there. Um, and so that's kind of I guess going to be a lot of the discussion tomorrow. Uh, is how how to adapt that. But we would probably discuss parallel lines. Well, what you can discuss? Uh, yeah. So I think that I think that's going to be mostly discussed tomorrow. So leave it just that for now. Um, so. I think now I'm going to kind of show you some of the, uh, the stuff. Um, I think that's next. Yeah, show and tell. Uh, so first of all, before I uh, go and do any of this stuff, um, there's uh, Volker has been doing a lot uh, on updating the developer's guide. Um, and that's the link. Uh, don't really want to write on the board because you won't be able to see it. But uh, if you go to github.com slash sagemath, um, one of the things in there uh, is going to be the git developer guide and um, it'll have a link in the readme to the actual readable version of it. Um, and if you've built uh, a copy of um, the Git version of Sage. There's uh, in the reference manual. Uh, if you kind of delve down a bit, um, you can access this in the notebook, for instance. Um, but you can find uh, the reference man man manual for the uh, development scripts, um, which are fairly fleshed out. Uh, I'd say quite well fleshed out. They have a lot of examples and use cases and that sort of stuff in here. So. Um, Let's see, there's Alice, right? So examples. Um, uh, so if you want to, if you want just a good place to read about kind of all this stuff, those two places will have a lot um, to tell you. Um, but I'm going to try to show you at least some of them. I could write it on the board. Uh, Uh, for Sage. Uh, it's, uh, so it's a, you'll have to have built the uh, uh, Sage Git version because I think this will only yeah this will only be in there. But it's uh, the reference manual for. Uh, <laughs> Is it anywhere on the internet? Huh? Is it anywhere it's, on the internet? I don't think anywhere on the internet. <laughs> Um, it's uh, sage.dev. Uh, uh, sage. Uh, yeah, it should be like if you've built it and you just run the notebook, you know, you can navigate through. Yeah. Uh, assuming you built the documentation when building Sage, which by default I think it does that, <laughs> you should be fine. How do you run the notebook? Hmm? How do you run the notebook? Uh, dot slash or Sage dash notebook. Oh. Um. I didn't think the third version had it at So, uh, those are two places that have a lot to read. Um, that will give you a lot of examples. Um, <laughs> yeah. Okay. So you don't actually. Let me. Let me. Uh, <laughs> so if you go into the notebook, unfortunately, I don't have a notebook up and running this. But if you go into the notebook, you click on help. Um, 
you might get something like this. I don't know exactly what help links to anymore. It's been a while. Um, but the Sage documentation, uh, it's reference manual. Ah, so you might get something that looks like this. Now that we have little lights off. Um, under reference manual, scroll down and uh, it's down here. Under doc test interface databases and miscellaneous, uh, development scripts. And the one that will actually be useful is that top one there. The other stuff is a lot of back end for the most part. Um, although. So this is from the Sage Git one, right? Right. So this is in the. This is in. Yeah. So this is in the documentation if you get the Sage Git version. Um, so. And like I said, it's fairly fleshed out. So you can also open it directly from a web browser using at least uh, yeah, uh, file colon slash 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 path to sage slash doc slash en slash reference slash. Um, Although you have to find out what documentation is because things are going through that a little bit. It's in the Sage root folder now. It's, uh, it's not quite in the Sage root folder. Uh, in the Sage, in the sage uh, session, you can type browse underscore sage underscore dot dot reference bracket, and then it will open your web browser and you can see reference manual. Sorry, and it's in Sage slash source, then then slash doc. That's that. that. Okay, so uh, those are a couple places. Yeah? Go back. <laughs> the developer guide or the reference manual? Uh huh. Uh huh. Ah, not developer guide. Uh, reference manual. Uh, probably, um, you, are you running, are you running the Git version? Uh, yeah. So just make, did you build the Git version? So there was a tarball. Uh, uh, okay. <laughs> yeah. It'll only be there on the Git version. Uh, scroll up to the bottom. It's in the kind of miscellaneous one. Uh huh. And then it's um, it's then bad gateway as we discovered. Uh okay. So um, uh, let me open up track. So let's look at maybe the ticket that is done in the old style, um, or I guess still the current style. Well, I kind of think of it as old since I haven't been working with the old one much. Um, but kind of we have these two extra fields that popped up um, a number of months ago, a branch field and a commit field. Um, and what I tried to do was make it so it was seamless for the current uh, current development model so that nothing that goes on right now had to be changed. Just kind of implement these things in the back end so that uh, when we make the switch, everything still there, working as it has been working, but uh, some of the things are now being used instead of just being left there. Um, so this, this branch field and commit field. So the commit field is um, not really that important for you guys to worry about. Uh, it will be automatically updated whenever you put something in a branch field um, or whenever you upload changes. Um, it's primarily there to um, for the patch bot and for um, 
the release manager to make sure they know the exact SHA of what they're merging. And really, we should probably make that freeze as soon as it's merged, um, rather than right now, as I think it'll just continue to update with the branch field. Um, and whereas the branch field is kind of you're attaching something to a ticket. So right now, you attach these pa patch files, but instead, we want to kind of attach some sort of changes that fix or add whatever extra feature um, that correspond to the, the branch one. So I found this other little cute one. Oop, don't want it all to go away. Um, that uh, Nathan Cohen it's his uh, first try at doing stuff with Git. Um, just kind of found this randomly earlier today. Um, huh? <coughs> um, uh, so uh, you can see that there is a branch fill, or bran the branch field is filled out, um, and also the commit field field is filled out. Although he didn't have to put in that crazy giant uh, forty character hexadecimal number in there. Um, so you don't have to worry about that bit. Um, and you see that the branch field kind of has these two things, uh, two links. There's this commits link and this green um, branch name. Uh, so the commits, if it'll work, I don't know. It's not been all that great at working. Um, we'll link to the list of commits that are introduced by, I don't know, that's uh, introduced by the ticket. Uh, so, yeah. So this this has a number of extra merges that aren't quite important to the ticket. So it kind of tells you why merges are not can be annoying because look at all these things that have nothing to do with the ticket. Uh, they're um, not really helpful in trying to figure out what happened in, uh, for the ticket. Uh, so another reason, uh, kind of, to not merge all the time. Um, but and then also there's this green link which. But sorry, so who merged in this case? I mean. So here, what happened was uh, there was a different um, branch that had kind of all the development scripts and the things that were needed to make uh, Sage build with the new directory structure, which I'll talk about in a little bit. Um, and uh, uh, Nathan based his work off of uh, kind of this branch that had all these things being merged into um, this place that had the development scripts and uh, kind of all those changes that was being updated kind of regularly. But if you look in here, um, all these merges there, there's nothing really in between them, so it's telling you that kind of these merges aren't really doing much, if anything. They're probably doing nothing, actually. Um, and these are merges made by um, uh, Timo and Julian, it looks like, uh, when they were kind of maintaining this kind of place that had all the development scripts and whatnot in there. So they no, Nathan, Mer Nathan based his work off oh, of it. Okay. So that, that's what happened. Mm -hmm. Kind of like if he committed an push to something based off of his tomato brush. Right. There would be a lot of merges in there that aren't doing that much. And so that's the only one that is to uh, track up things that you should do a different method than so, what do you mean by track update? Well, I mean, so if you wanted to uh, move something to the same track, mm -hmm. uh, no, I mean, really, he was just working off of an old version of what you kind of have to do until this stuff kind of settles down, unfortunately. Um, so, uh, really right now there's, it's almost 
inevitable there's going to be a bunch of